Good morning and welcome again to the St. Catterg Ministry Area Morning Prayer. Today coming from St. Edmunds in Crickowl. Welcome to all our friends both within and outside the ministry area. And this morning we're also welcoming people joining us through the networks of the Church Mission Society. CMS are holding their Wales and the Borders Conference this weekend and this service is part of that. So welcome to all of you, wherever you are, to our morning prayer here in Crickowl. Today we're celebrating the Feast of St Luke, the Great Evangelist, and also Bible Sunday, particularly looking at the work of CMS in sharing knowledge of the Bible around the world. We have a strong and proud tradition of mission work here in the ministry area, both locally with our work in schools and the community, and many of our parishes have members with missional experience around the world. Later on, Paul Thaxter, who is Director of International Mission at the CMS, will speak to us, but Jill Knight is first going to give us a quick overview of the work of CMS Wales. I've been asked to say a few words about the history of CMS Wales, not in the hope of tying us into the former things, but to acknowledge our context, give thanks for the work and achievements of members in Wales, and maybe inspire us to future actions. I'm indebted to Roz Kappa for reminding me of some of the things that had gone out of my mind. CMS Wales took over from the old Members' Council as CMS structures changed. The annual conference, enabling folk to hear more of CMS work and pray for it, is long-standing, though there used to be a day conference set around an AGM as well. The J.C. Jones Lecture, a scholarly lecture given to clergy and laity, was at first run by area reps and the bishops, but later handed over to the CMS Wales members, who organised a lecture tour. Given the difficult geography of Wales, two venues in the south and one or two in the north, it was well supported in memory of a Welsh bishop who'd previously taught in Bishop Tucker College, Mucono. But in 2007, the CMS Wales Committee, recognising a changing culture, opted to finish in its 50th year, on a high. Not only was the tour arranged, but the lecture was also printed up and sold on the night and afterwards. Memorable ones include Roger Bowen's Rwanda Reflections, Bishop Takani Tafti on Iran, and Diana Witts on Refugees and the Mission of God, stemming from which we produced the study pack, The Outsiders. There was also a newsletter for members and supporting churches, including news of all the mission partners linked with any church in Wales, and those who had gone out from Wales with CMS too. Another thing CMS Wales did was to raise money to support young adults from Wales to go on CMS short-term experience trips, and encourage them to share their story on return. In short, CMS Wales has worked to create a bridge between the Church in Wales, CMS and the world. Now, shall we take a minute first to collect our thoughts and share our opening prayer? Dear Lord, as we gather this morning to share worship, prayer and praise, Help us to remember our blessings, admit our failings, and give our concerns over to you. Help us to make good use of this, the day the Lord has made. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. This morning, Merwin Large will lead us in our first hymn, well loved by us all and specially significant to CMS, Amazing Grace. Say 
And now, shall we say together the psalm for today, Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the lyre. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be, world without end, forever. Amen. Let us now take a few moments to think about the mistakes we've made during the week and bring them to God. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Father, who by our Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself and forgives the sins of all who truly repent, pardon and deliver us from all our sins and grant us the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. And now, let us share the peace, either by turning to those who are with us or if we can't do that, let's take a few moments to think of those we would turn to if we could. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. The reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 19 through to 26. The Church in Antioch. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen travelled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, Men from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. 
And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. This is the word of the Lord. Hello, I'm Paul Faxter, Director of International Mission for CMS, Church Mission Society. And I'm here in the CMS Community House, where people from different parts of the world come together to pray, to read God's Word together, to study and to live together as community. Today I want to talk about God's international family. I have the privilege of meeting your family and my family around the world, from Latin America to Africa to Asia, to the Middle East. And I'm often astonished by the faith and commitment of our fellow brothers and sisters. Their willingness to love one another and to serve others means that the church is growing throughout the world. Today, as we look at the passage, Acts 11, verses 19 to 26, I want to share three points from there. The first is, when people are on the move, God is on the move. The second is to celebrate Christ being made known in different cultures. And the third is to discover why we got the nickname Christian. Let me start with my first point. God's on the move when people are on the move. Within the first chapters of Acts, you see the persecution has broken out. We see uh, the fact that the, the people of God are scattered. And yet, God is still at work. Matthew's Gospel says at the beginning that God is Emmanuel with us, God with us. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, he says that as we go into all the world, Jesus will be with us, even to the end of the age. So God is with people as they move. Migration and the movements around the earth doesn't mean that God is not with his people. I'd like to introduce you to Joseph Noel, a brother I've known very well, and he's your brother too. Joseph came to Christ at 19 years of age in Khartoum at an Arabic youth meeting. As he met with Christ, he wanted to use his many skills and gifts to serve others. Working with CMS Africa, and using CMS Africa training materials, he works with people in camps and those that are internally displaced in South Sudan, helping give them a future and a hope. In the area of missions, for me, is, is another approach of actually reaching out to these communities and people. It's not just directly coming to them and saying, OK, you just accept Jesus Christ and you're fine but also learning that you are a steward of whatever God has entrusted you from resources, whether they are too much or little. And, and, and God is just that he has not left anyone without anything. Even if you are in the village there, you have something that will keep you alive. So you need to find what is that and how you can make use of it. Because of this long war issue, people living in camps, in IDP camps. And you know, in IDP camps, literally, you're just redundant, you're doing nothing. From morning to evening, you just wait for the food that will be provided to you, whatever it is, you have no choice. You're like in prison. And that kills so many things in so many people. So when they come out, they come out, they feel that they're totally useless, that we cannot do anything. We just wait for whatever help or aid. And that brings that, you know, culture of dependency, too much dependence, dependency. So the hope that we're trying to bring in is that it's not all like that. Yes, you have gone through this, but that was a situation that you didn't choose. But now you need to come back to your reality as really God right from the beginning created you. And you start doing something because this is how God created us. And, and that's the hope that I, I, I look forward to see. So many families, communities uh, are embracing that. As you can see, Joseph Noel is training and equipping people for the future church in South Sudan. 
In fact, the church in South Sudan is the hope of the nation, where people from all different tribes can come together and be united in Christ. Joseph is building that church. For my second point, let's celebrate Christ being made known in all cultures. It is not necessarily easy. In fact, the early church struggled with it. And as the church broke, persecution broke out and spread, uh, there were challenges. Ananias had to go to Saul, the persecutor. Peter had to go to the Roman centurion, Cornelius. And Barnabas was sent from Jerusalem to see what God was doing amongst the Gentiles at Antioch. When Barnabas arrived in Antioch, it said he saw the grace of God and rejoiced. He was delighted by what God was doing amongst the Gentiles and he gave a good report. Somebody else who's of that first generation of believers is Chan Nam Chen, the executive director of Asia CMS. As he came to Christ as a young man, he decided to reach out to his family and to reach out to those people who have never heard the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He wanted them to hear. When you realize what the Bible says, when Jesus made the statement that I am the way, the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me, that creates a very deep impact within your heart. Because especially when you are the first Christian in your home, you think about, what about my family? What about others? From the time I was 18, I was pretty de determined to whatever way I could to bring the gospel, especially to the people that have least opportunity to, uh, to hear. I essentially plunge or stumble onto cross-culture church planting, simultaneously planting a, tri a tribal church or a church among a group of people that later I discovered this phrase called unreached people groups. But actually, that was what it was. There was actually no prior Christian among them. Although it is a minority faith, the church in Asia is incredibly vigorous. Okay, uh, the fa right now, the fastest rate of conversion on the planet, uh, people receiving Jesus, is really found in Asia. I think for us as, as in Asia CMS, what we seek to do is this: we seek to, our tagline is together on the edge in God's mission. In other words, we are seeking not to compete with but to complement whatever the churches are doing, particularly in the areas where it is least engaged and where it is on the margins. It's a real privilege as CMS to work with Asia CMS and to celebrate the emergence of the church in Asia in so many different ways. A Nepalese friend said to me many years ago, Paul, we used to know most of the church because most of us were in prison together, but now we celebrate that there are so many people who know Christ that we don't know. Despite current uh, persecution and difficulty, the church is growing and deepening there. But there is still a massive challenge in Asia, which has 50 nations, 60% of the world's population, and only 8.5% are Christian. The Asian movements and churches need our prayers and our support. Thirdly, I want to share about why we got the nickname Christians. I like to think it's because no matter what religious background you're from, no matter what ethnicity you have, no matter what profession you're engaged in, or which part of the city you live in, you will have some unity in Christ. Was it when the Christians were in the street and greeting one another in the name of Christ that we got that nickname, Christians? Whatever, Jesus is the unity in our diversity. Let me introduce you to another sister of ours, Edina Dunmore. She's trained on the CMS Pioneer Training Course and works in Southall, a multicultural area of London. And she's inviting different communities to come together in an initiative called The Table. 
I came here with a missional community and we lived on one of the, the local council estates here. Um, just got to know our neighbours um, and um, found that people were, yeah, had all sorts of um, needs and issues that they wanted us to help them support, to support them with. The church um, here at St John's that I'm part of in Southall is very strong and vibrant um, and has a really good reputation in the community. Southall has um, a very large South Asian community, so mostly Punjabi, some Sri Lankans and Pakistanis as well. Um, also a big Somali community. Um, and now some Eastern Europeans as well, but not, not so many white British. Um, but we're able to really build bridges um, and, uh, within those communities. So we have a new fresh expression that we started in our church about 18 months ago. Uh, it's called The Table. Um, it um, is a new congregation in the church that um, is uh, pioneering in all that it does. And we um, invite the many pe of the people that come in for our weekday activities to that um, event. Uh, we have uh, worship and prayer and we share, bring and share food together and many people from different backgrounds come together to share their stories, to um, hear about Jesus and then discuss what that might mean to them um, and just to become a community together. Whether you live in a diverse multicultural area like Southall in London or not, we're all called as God's family to connect and to learn from God's international family wherever it is. So to summarise, God's on the move when people are on the move. Like Barnabas, we can celebrate Christ being made known in other cultures. And as Christians, as part of this international family, we can understand and see Jesus as the unity in our diversity. In the CMS Community House, we pray for the nations. And we want to see as a household of God how we can encourage one another to pray and support each other throughout the world. CMS has resources that we can offer, such as our prayer space on email or our prayer lines you can get through the post every two months. These are very simple but really effective discipleship tools to help us pray daily for the needs of the world. The Church of Christ began to emerge as we see in the book of Acts, as it grows and develops, let us stay connected. Let us be there for one another, wherever we are. Thank you, Paul. That was wonderful. Shall we now join in affirming our faith in the words of the baptismal creed? I believe and trust in God the Father, who created all that is. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gave life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so now we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Anna Besant will now lead us in prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our minds to understand your scriptures, and our mouths to proclaim your forgiveness. In the name of him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our CMS prayer lines, we've been asked to pray for Malcolm Pritchard, serving at the Theological College in Gula, Northern Uganda. The prayer is for wisdom for Malcolm and his students in his care and for the willingness of the church to challenge worldly systems 
to work for the kingdom as well as for each precious person. We give thanks for CMS Wales, for the fellowship we have shared over the past few days, and for people's continued spirit of adventure and willing hearts to battle new technologies to enable us to gather together in a reimagined way. We give thanks for all people in the long history of CMS who have found their neighbours to be people in far off and distant lands and have truly lived your gospel. We pray for all who have died in your faith and fear. We pray for Edwin Amir Khan, our brother in Christ, who died this week, and for his wife, Surya Edwin, and their three children. Be with them in their grief. We pray that he will live on in the hearts at the people of the Shalom Center, Christian Centre and that even in his death that the love and justice and mercy of Christ will be proclaimed. We give thanks for the extraordinary life of service of our sister in Christ, Kathleen Richards, and we pray for her beloved son Jonathan and his wife Alison and their family. Lord, comfort them in their grief. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We give thanks for the work of CMS across the world, but we especially give thanks for the work of CMS in South Sudan. We pray your blessing upon these lands and these people. We pray for St Edmund's Church and for our community here and for the Reverend Rana Khan and his continued commitment to the work of CMS. We hold in our prayers all who have made this conference possible and for the many people who have joined us to share their stories and vision with us. We give thanks for Bishop Anthony Pogo, Bishop Robert Patterson, Bishop Patrick Augustine, Anne-Marie Wilson, Lynn Teneri, Ali Bateman and Paul Faxter and Debbie James. Be with them as they work for your kingdom on earth. We especially pray for the future of CMS Wales. Lord, give us the energy and vision to walk in your way. Hear us, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. The Collect for today, the Collect for St Luke. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician, whose praise is in the Gospel to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the gospel, give your church the same love and power to heal through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory now and forever. Amen. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything on heaven and on earth is yours. All things come of you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Now, as our service draws to an end, I'd like to especially thank Simon Large and James Besant, who've done all the clever technical sorting out in the background, Marwin Large for her music, and several churches are now open for services, we hope. And the next online stream service from St. Catholic will be on November the 8th, so that's in two weeks' time, which is Remembrance Sunday. It will come from St. Ethley's at Lenethley, and the Reverend Morgan Llewellyn will be preaching. 
And Marwan will now lead us in our closing hymn, Tell Out My Soul. peace of God, which passes all understandings. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>